cup of tea time first. A little bit of a sip. <laughs> ah, and we're off. We're back on. Hi, Chloe. Hey, how are you? Good. Both of us back on board after a one-week hiatus. Uh, hopefully refreshed. Uh, needless to say, we both needed some time off. So skip yes. the week. Everyone else can suffer in their jocks as far as I'm concerned. I mean, they'll love us that much. They'll be like, we missed a week. We've got to get onto it, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So let's exactly do this. Let's talk happen. about movies. <laughs> let's talk about movies for half an hour. Let's do that, shall we? We absolutely should. But first of all, shall we introduce ourselves? Or would you like me to do that today? You can have a crack at it. I don't care. Have a crack at it. I'm offended. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> it's Glenn and Chloe from uh, Good Movie Monday podcast. This is our little sort of, um, what do we call it? We call it a... This is where you always get tripped up every time. <laughs> a little bit of bonus content from the Good Movie Monday bonus podcast. Bonus content, yes. But bonus you know content. what, I've... I mean, we, we, we do this for ourselves, obviously. We love to just podcast and talk about shit, right? But I don't, I'm not comfortable calling this bonus content because this is its own thing. Okay. This is our Wednesday night show. It's like, you know, it's just it's the Glenn and Chloe thing. And it is, um, it's on the network of Good Movie Monday, you could say. Let's do, let's, let's call it that. It's in the network of the Good Movie Monday <laughs> podcast. So check them out. Yeah. Make sure every Monday, as it states yeah, in the name. Monday just gone, we um we talked about the Roaring Twenties. That was our theme for the show. So there's a whole lot of that. There's a whole lot of that talk, you know, for the 1920s. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, awesome. So we, we had fun with that. So, you know, if you, if you stumble upon this video on, you know, wherever, go and check that out too because it's fun. Just thinking about you and Ben talking like that for <laughs> an hour and a bit, just um. Oh, it's not it's not the whole hour and a bit, but it's a you know it, I I can't help but re, you know recede into it. You know, it's like I I'm talking like this, and all of a sudden I'll be like, hey, what's up, Ben? You know. Glenn and Tips Maggie. <laughs> That's what that reminded me of, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's been going on in your movie world, Glenn? That's a good question. Let's. Um, I've got some stuff down. Most of my notes are from the week before last because we missed a week and I had notes and I'm like, that was a good excuse to just put the tools down and not really do much, right? Because I had other stuff. But there's a few new things in there I've squeezed in. But let's start with the sad news and work our way up to the happy news because Ray Liotta passed away the other day. And that was very sad. Sudden as well. Yeah, and, and fairly young for, you know, for these days. Yeah, absolutely. It's really sad. So I did they say what it was, a heart attack or? I don't, the last I read, I don't know. It was natural causes. It was in his sleep, I believe. He was making a film, so he was like on location, either oh, in man. his trailer or in a hotel or something like that. But yeah, yeah, no, very sad. And um, I mean, it's funny, like the, the, re the reaction and the response around the world to his death is much more like it's, there's a lot more of it than I anticipated there would be if I was you know if you were going to talk about different people and and the reaction they would get I wouldn't have thought that he would get what he did like you know people the outpouring of you know of condolences and and memories and it's just it's it's loaded like they're everywhere and I I just wouldn't have anticipated that from him he was one of those movie stars that was so talented that everyone respected him so much but he was so talented that he was even stayed out of the spotlight as well. Yeah. And he got to be that Hollywood star without being that Hollywood star. You know what I mean? So, And as Ben and I mentioned on, on Monday's show, like we're grateful that one of the most recent and possibly the most lasting impression of Ray Liotta is that big fluffy clown wig from Hoobie Halloween. Oh, God. God. <laughs> God. <laughs> No. What an image. What an image with him wearing that, that Afro clown wig. Oh, my God. Hilarious. I had forgotten about that until you just brought it up. <laughs> yeah. And Come it's on, funny, like, <laughs> it's like somehow everything comes around to Hubie Halloween. Like, I reckon you could tie everything on this earth to Hubie Halloween if you tried. Are you going to do six degrees of Hubie Halloween now? We might, <laughs> have to. we might have to do a whole episode on that one. And you can phone it in. 
all right, well, I mean, prepare for have me cry because you're gonna win that one because everything will tie back to it. And it's not, it's not, a, it's not a game. It's, a, it's just, a, it's gonna be just like we're talking about the fabric of life, right? So we're, we're just, <laughs> we're doing David Attenborough. We're, we're traveling the world theoretically, and we're connecting the threads yeah. of life to Hubie Halloween is what we're doing. Yeah, because it's you know, it is. Couldn't have, couldn't have picked any other any other movie any any other movie. <laughs> He's just so funny in it. Anyway, we've managed to turn a, a, a very sad piece of news into a happy story. Anyway, because Hubie Halloween, so clown wig and all that stuff. Well, look, if you can leave that sort of beautiful, lasting image in your mind, then that's that's one. One um, lovely thing that he's done for you. So there you go. I reckon, you know, maybe we, we'll check back in with you. I reckon in 10 to 15 years' time, you're going to be an Uber Hooby Halloween fan. An Uber Hooby. <laughs> an Uber Hooby. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Uber Hooby. <laughs> I reckon we go Uber Hooby. Uber Hooby? Um, yeah. Look, you're wrong, um, and that's fine. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll check back in. We'll We'll check back in in May and in 20 what what did you say 10 years 10 15 i can't be wrong until then so i've got a, a good way ahead of me we'll we'll see how it goes <laughs> we'll see how it goes hey um i saw top gun uh ben and i saw that uh, a couple of weeks ago now they did a, an advanced screening did we talk about that on the last video uh we haven't talked about it no but i have talked to you personally about it yeah. just not not recorded but um your general consensus seems to be everybody's general consensus. Yeah, it's, I haven't heard from, one bad thing about it. For me, so far this year, it's it's the best film of the year. It's that good. It's I don't know, I'm saying this just to the people that haven't seen it. It's been out for you know a week now. I think um, less you know, one day short of a week. Go and watch it. It's the ultimate big screen experience. It's just fantastic. It's making me want to see it. It really is like oh, all yeah. of these good reviews. I mean, and the thing is, right, it doesn't require um, you watching the original to enjoy it, but it benefits the hell of a lot if you have seen the original. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, and, and you don't you might watch the original and you might hate the original or just not think much of it, but even don't let that stop you because this, this new one is just fucking next level. It's so good. I don't think, I don't think, nothing has given me reason to think that I wouldn't like the original one. Um, yeah. I do love an action movie and just, I've got these tainted views of Tom Cruise. That's all that's holding yeah. me back um, yeah. from, yeah. My, my mother is quite disappointed in me that I've never seen Top Gun. So I might actually have to, we might have to organize a date night or something. Mum and yeah, I and totally go see the new it. one. Or... It's, and, and there's, hey, you know, there's lots of um, topless guys on the beach playing volleyball. Sold. Sold. Yep. Awesome. That's fine. That's awesome. fine by me. Are they greased up? Ben and, well, Ben and I are going to reenact that for a midweek video. Exactly. exactly. I'd like um I'd like a premiere to that movie, please. Well, we're trying it's just it's gonna be it's gonna be a short video, <laughs> but we're gonna try and get sponsorship from KC because we'd love to ultimately be walking around with buckets <laughs> of chicken whilst we play. I've got one in the kitchen because I'm very hungover and KFC is my hangover food. So right is there. Is KFC not the greatest thing for a hangover? It's, oh. it's, there is literally nothing better ever than when Sometimes you are so like, hungover and eating fried I mean, chicken. KFC have this massive menu of all these different things. You've got wraps, you've got burgers and you've got nuggets and all that. But sometimes just that chicken in a bucket is it's everything. Yeah, and controversial, I do like to leave it so it cools right down and then stick it in the microwave and then, like, that nuke the shit out of it and it tastes so much better. It, it, well, I, I will agree like that. Hey, this is not an endorsement. We should stop talking about KFC. <laughs> I could do this all night. <laughs> Fucking hell. I'm contemplating going out another box before I go to bed. Jesus. I'm contemplating going to KFC. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okie dokie. Well, there's lots and lots and lots of sequel news over the last two weeks that we can talk about. You know, your your favourite subject. Laura Abiding Citizen is getting a, a sequel. I did see that. Um, but what I wanted to to ask about, because I heard that Encino Man 
was going to be getting a sequel. No? I think you mean bi- Biodome. No, I heard Encino Man. Okay, well, that's interesting because Paulie Shaw from Encino Man has announced that Biodome 2 is being made. So there's that. Okay. Encino Maybe Man, Pauly I Paulie Shaw's heard... having a comeback. Well, Paulie Shaw, I mean, yeah, I love Paulie Shaw. The guy, you know, he's, he's a man child. He never grew up and he still constantly goes on the podcast and all different things talking about how he misses, you know, his youth and wishes that he was still making those movies. And it's just sort of like, it's sad. It's really sad to watch. But if Biodome can give him a bit of a, a new lease on life and it leads to other things, then I'm all for it. I hadn't heard the, the Encino Man uh, news, but if it is news, I'll go with it. You know, I, is it a remake? Is it a reboot? Is it a sequel? If it's a sequel, that's a, that's a hard thing to to get your head around. Well, that's what I'm kind of wondering, like, um, is it fake news or is it, like, actually real? Because I'd have to get both Sean Astin and Brendan Fraser on board. And, you know, we all know Brendan Fraser's making a comeback and, you know, Sean Astin has never disappeared. So, I mean, fingers crossed because I love that movie and I actually would love a sequel of that because he did. Well, I mean, he, had it's, his, it's... he had his Betty Nugs at the end of it and I want to see Betty Nugs and... <laughs> it's not like you and I have a, a midweek show um where we present movie news um and you're like we need to make sure that's not fake (laughs) well i mean i i saw something about it but i didn't know if it was like just rumors or if it actually had been greenlit so that's what what i'm just wondering about yeah look it could be you're being um, particular now glenn okay all right (laughs) biodome 2 is kind of cool to to get um to to contemplate because apparently in this one they're going off into space. So, do you know Bi- okay. Biodome at all? No. It's it's just, it's a it's a stoner movie pretty much. And they and okay. he he and um Stephen Baldwin play two doofuses, you know, stoner types. And whilst they're on a road trip, they need to take a piss. So, the only stop along the highway is a biodome and what it is, it's like a big um it's like a big bubble and it's a, a biological environmental experiment where they're going to lock scientists in there for 12 months and see how they can survive in the bubble sustained by hydroponics and things like that. Like so what just... um, they did in the Simpsons movie type thing. Ah, uh, well, no, no, no. This is much more contained. Like this is just, right. you know, okay. like a, like a small warehouse size type of thing. And it's just, mm. the whole thing is like a jungle, right? Inside it's like a jungle. Anyway, uh, these two doofuses break in to take a piss and then get locked in for 12 months with the scientists. And then it's a whole <laughs> of like, they they don't get bored at all. They amuse themselves to no end, much to the frustration and aggravation of all these scientists. And That sounds like a really good movie. <laughs> it's a, Well, it's a cult classic. It's got a huge cult following. And so came as no surprise when they when he announced this news that fans all over the world just went nuts for it. And he released a poster and the poster has them sort of in like a rocket ship going to the moon or wherever. So clearly this one's going to be a similar thing where there's like some kind of experimental facility that they <laughs> crash into or something, which so far fetched, I'm, I'll go with it for sure. That's great. That sounds great. I love that. Kylie Minogue was in the first one too. No shit. Really? Yeah. She's one of the scientists and she has orange hair. Oh. <gasps> Oh my god! I have to watch this movie. <laughs> it's funny. It is funny. I love me a, a good stoner movie, and Paulie Shaw, Kylie Minogue. Yes. It's got a really, really funny uh, musical montage to "Safety Dance." Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> and do Paulie Shaw or um, Stephen Ball hook up with Kylie Minogue as well? They try. <laughs> they definitely try. <laughs> my man. Oh, shit. So that's, that's one great. sequel. Yeah, Law Abiding Citizen, as I said, that's the um, let's f- for your benefit. It's the Gerald Butler movie from <laughs> several years ago. Oh, okay. I was thinking Liam Neeson. No, no, it's okay. Yep, keep going. Gerard Butler. He he is the um in that one. He's the the husband slash father, I think, of woman that's murdered, and he brings down the justice system with his own very smart um plot of revenge where he exposes the corruption within the system it's it's a clever film but it is make no mistake it is a just an action violent Mm -hmm. action kind of movie but it's just very clever uh so he plays a bit of a vigilante so part two i don't know what they would do with it but whatever they can do anything with a sequel interesting well they made like multiple diehards so i don't see why they wouldn't be able to do that so 
Yeah, I mean, it's just that this guy's story kind of had a finale, you know, like, so what else they could give him to do, that, that remains to be seen, but so there's another sequel. Did you ever watch the movie The Dry with Eric Banner? Because that's getting a sequel. Um, No, I haven't seen that one. Um, <laughs> you know me, I haven't seen anything. <laughs> um, okay, it's getting a sequel. So that was, that's... Yeah, so The Dry is a really really cool uh thrill arts an australian film it's all set in like rural victoria in a like a, a make-believe town i don't it's not a real town they're in but it yeah it felt like it was in, an australian the, movie yeah yeah and he's a cop that goes back to investigate the the death of a friend from high school it's his hometown but when he gets there he's met with like hostility and a lot of people don't want him back and turns out there's a backstory to that so the film kind of has two storylines it has like a um, almost like a few flashbacks that kind of tell his teenage story and why he left town. Yeah. And then it tells this other story with the murder investigation, but they all come to a head together and it's a very gripping and tight police procedural thriller um, that's very clever and the payoff is fantastic. And apparently there's three books in the series. So this next right. film is another investigation of his that takes place up in the Dandenong Ranges. So it's um, going to be more of a a green, wet, damp type of film as opposed to the dusty, dry film of the first one. Wow, interesting. Yes. Next he'll be underwater. That's right. That's right. It'll be a blue film. <laughs> I was trying to think of a funny quip with his name, but I just couldn't. I'm too. <laughs> I was be like, any Eric underwater No, it didn't work. No. Sorry, no. I mean, if he's I'm not witty today. <laughs> If he's going to be underwater, he'll need a banana boat. Do, 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 do. Banana boat. Do, 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 do. No? Okay. <laughs> Take a sip. Um, I watched a exciting. movie. No. Oh, yes. That's exciting. Tell I did. It. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often, but I did. I, I watched a movie. I was looking for something fun and light and something that I didn't need to sort of really concentrate on. So I decided to watch the new Rebel Wilson um <laughs> netflix movie yeah yeah it's it's queued up I, I have it there to watch i just i haven't done it yet yeah look it's it's worth a watch at some point i don't know if you need to rush to it um, i mean i would argue i would argue she's never really been that funny but my question to you would be has she lost any funny with the weight loss no no i think no? she's about the same um okay. it's still which it's is, still the which same is not mold. very funny <laughs> Oh, she's a hit and miss for me in terms of yeah. comedy. Um, mm. I feel like she can be very funny and some of it's just not like it's a bit too try hard. Yeah, um, that's fair. That's fair. I didn't hate it, but I, I won't be rushing back to it. It's just one of so those ones liked with it, a lot of holes. You liked it You liked it more than Hubie Halloween. I'd watch this movie again before I'd watch Hubie Halloween again. Okay. Well, in fairness, you have seen that twice. That's true. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I've got it on my list. It's one I'm, I'm not going to ignore. I'll get to it eventually. But um, just, yeah, I, I, like you said, you have to be in that mood for just something that's so brainless. And um, yeah, wait for that time to strike. I feel like I feel like Chris Parnell, um, his talents are getting wasted with these kinds of movies. He's a very, very funny, talented man, and he needs to do other things other than these movies. So I kind of hated him in his role. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like it really dumbed him down. Oh, I just, I don't know. I didn't love him in it. Um, I feel like he can do a lot better. Um, and same with Sam Richardson as well. I feel like he can do a lot better than these types of movies. And yeah, that's just my yeah, opinion. I mean, yeah, no, I, I know what you can't, where you're coming from. I mean, at the same time, they're at a, a, a level of their career where, they need the money. It's a job, um, you know, because they're not high profile compared to you know, your A-listers and that. So it's amazing how many people that are famous, but they're not A-list and they're living in a trailer or they're living in their mum's house, you know. Yeah, Jesus which Christ. is really, really sad because actors like Chris Parnell are just so bloody talented. Um, yeah. He's just one of those ones that can do anything. And I hate seeing him reduced to these sort of 
roles. I don't know. I mean, just he's probably an exception me. to the rule. He's he's not probably not one of the ones I'm talking about where he's living with his mum or whatever. But he might a be. Job is a, job. He, a job is a job when you're when you're that kind of caliber of actor. You know, it's, it's hard to say no when there's you know, hey, we're going to give you hundred thousand dollars. You know, all right. <laughs> yeah. Look. I can't disagree with you there because if someone came in and said, hey, I'll give you $100,000, I'd probably do it too. Um, if someone said to you, I'm going to give you $100,000 to be the, the lead actress in Hubie Halloween 2, you'd do it. I'd be like, give me 200000 and I'll do it. Bullshit. 100%. <laughs> and they say, no, that's all right. We've got someone else in the wings. Then I'll say, fine, I'll take 100000 <laughs> <laughs> Because I know Chloe would be like, I can. I'm a sellout. <laughs> <laughs> I'd I'd do it just to be close to Adam Sandler. To be in truth, as much as he annoyed yeah. me, I'd do it just to be close to him. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to crowbar that movie into every conversation we have. Uh, what other sequel news do I have? Well, there's the whole um, Ocean's Eleven sequel or prequel with Margot Robbie that's been announced. Yeah. Hmm. Eh. I don't care about that. I really prequel don't. to what? Prequel to Ocean's Eleven. So is she going to be playing Julia Robertson's character when she was younger or something? You reckon? Who knows? She okay. might play... She's not young enough to be the Sandra Bullock character younger. So I don't know, because Sandra Bullock was in the Ocean's 8 spin-off mm. movie. Yeah. Who knows? And, and honestly, I don't care. Like, I think that's a franchise that has been flogged to death and doesn't really need to be resurrected. Um, I felt like that's one that could have stuck at one and just left it as a classic. Totally, because it was a remake of a 1960s movie in and of itself, and that would have been just fine. And it was a Steven Soderbergh film that was very much a Steven Soderbergh film, whereas part two and three, even though he made them, it didn't feel like his sort of yeah, okay. sort of flavour or stamp. Yep. Anyway, anyway what else have I got? <laughs> Speaking of prequels, not that this will matter to you, there's a prequel to The Omen that's coming. Okay. Which, um which I, I kind of don't mind the idea of because The Omen is a franchise that, at least trilogy-wise, 1, 2, and 3 were all really, really good films. Sam Neill was in the third one and um, Gregory Peck in the first one. It's a, Yeah, it's a good story to go back and revisit. Can they pull it off? I don't know what the story would be about because the first... It's, it's called The First Omen, by the way. But the original film followed Damien, the son of Satan, mm -hmm. from birth... And then the trilogy followed him until he became like a politician in America. It has to be a different child, obviously, if you're going to do a prequel. This has to be a different character, I guess. Satan's first attempt at resurrection. Maybe it's about Satan. Who knows? But I actually have seen the first one a very, very long time ago. Um, I thought you'd be proud of me for that. I actually have seen it. Yeah, totally. Totally. It's 70s, a great movie. 70s, yeah, that one. It's like, mm. it's not been, yeah. So I have seen Dr that Directed one. by um, Richard Donner. Who didn't you know Superman and Lethal oh, Weapons? Superman, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. Omen's fantastic. It's, it's not a like people say it's a, a horror film, but it's not. It's a drama. It's a drama. Yeah. You know that just happens to be horrific. Yeah. So, which is the same you could say about The Exorcist, even though it's 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 a horror film, it's grounded in drama. You yeah, know, it's its own it. type of horror genre, I believe. Like yeah. those sort of seventies. Um, like 70s horror movies, kind of like that. I, f yeah. I feel like that kind of with the first Halloween as well. Um, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah, these are back when, you know, horror films were Oscar quality. You could imagine yeah. them being nominated for Oscars and things like that. Uh, yeah. What else we got? We've got, we got about five five minutes or so. Simple Favourite 2 is coming. That's yeah, okay. I haven't even seen the first one because... I don't know why, okay. but it just feels like it would be shit. Sorry. No, it's 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 much better than you anticipate because I went into it thinking the same thing. But it is it's very clever. It's um Paul Fig directed it, the guy from Bridesmaids and Paul Fig, yeah, I know Paul. But it's not it's not his usual brand of comedy, which is what I liked about it. It's actually quite thrilling. So okay. I reckon it's worth a look, and I'll, I'll go along for a sequel. You know, I won't catch it in the cinemas, but I'll probably watch it on streaming when it lands for sure. Yep. And um, let's just back it up and add some context for people. When you just said that you haven't contributed, that's because you told me before the show that you had nothing. All right, so it's not, not like I'm not hogging lot. the microphone. I'm not hogging no, the no, microphone. No, no, so. no. I fell flat this week. I definitely did. So I apologize, everybody. But Glenn is no. just amazing. Always prepared. Do you, do you have anything, though, that you want to talk about before we wrap? 
Um, I did see that there was a new trailer out for Elvis. Um, I haven't watched it yet because I'm just like, is it going to be the same thing? Is it going to change my mind? I just, I don't know still. So I might watch it later and I'll check back in with you next week. Um, I'm avoiding, I'm avoiding um, the trailers for this. I've seen the initial ones and they did not do a lot for me. Yeah. (laughs) And, And I can't get beyond the Tom Hanks factor. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Because I, I've seen video footage of, of Colonel Tom Parker, like the guy he's playing. I know his voice and I know his personality from the archives. And what I'm seeing in the trailer is not that at all. They've taken some creative it, license there. But they've, they've, you know, I don't know, like they've just made him into a cartoon character and it just, I, don't, I don't like Tom Hanks' delivery in the trailer. So I, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm seeing the film regardless, but... I just need to temper my expectations by not watching any more trailers because I just I'm I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're doing the right thing. So if it uh, does end up being good, then you'll be actually pleasantly surprised. So I totally, think that's a good totally. a good idea. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, have there been any more trailers that have dropped? I can't think over the last week or in a bit. Not that I've seen. I, th- I see that there's a lot of sort of um, horror coming out at the moment. Oh, my favourite, one of my favourite TV shows is getting a feature length um, uh, sort of movie TV show made about it. Um, the Detectorists. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but. Yeah, of course I have. Toby movie- Jones. Yeah, how great. I'm very excited about that. Very excited. Yeah, that is cool. And and that you can imagine that too. Like it'd be a small film. It'd be like a fairly well, the way that it ended, yeah. you can see kind of where they will taper off with it or where they could go with it, um, which is very exciting. So that is cool. And was that a trailer or just news? No, just news. I just saw that they okay. um yeah, they'd got the green light to do to do that. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Such an odd one. Hey, we can we can tie that in. I don't know the guy's name, but Toby Jones is in that. But you know the tall, lanky guy that's also in it? Mackenzie. He... Yes, something like that. I can't remember his last well, name, but his name's Mackenzie, yeah. Because there's the news of um, there's two more Pirates of the Caribbean movies in the works. Um, they've written one script that probably won't happen because it's Johnny Depp focused, and then they've written another mm-hmm. script, which is the one they're, they're pitching for Margot Robbie to take over. Okay. If it's got yeah. him and the other guy in it, then I might watch it. If there was a Pirates of the Caribbean movie featured around his character and the other pirate character, I'd watch that hands down. I'd, I'd be like one of the first in line. Yeah. I mean, I, I've never been a fan of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. You know, I've, I've seen them all and I, I think I've seen them all at the cinema too, but it's, it's, never been, it's never been a franchise that really tickles me. So I don't yeah. care much for this, this news and, What's with Margot Robbie now just being, like, associated with sequels and pre-established properties? I don't, I don't get why she needs to be doing that kind of thing. But I guess um, a, a Pirates of the Caribbean movie would be a very, very tasty paycheck, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, I guess you'd, you'd love to have something like that on your resume, like a giant blockbuster sort of Bruckheimer film like that. And- there's every chance, like, um, we, we do pre-record this um, conversation, but there's every chance that by the time this drops, the result of the, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing will be out in the public. So, oh, you know, true. interestingly, though, like, I think it, whichever way it goes, and this is going to be so funny to listen back in retrospect because we're predicting what's already known. Um, if he wins or loses, I think he comes out on top of this one because he's in the public eye. He's reclaimed his name and his reputation. Absolutely. Even if he loses, even if he loses, the public, generally speaking, is on side. If he wins, well, I think Hollywood owes him a lot, and um, that you know he said he'll never go back to pirates, but if the fans wanted, I think he would. I think yeah, I think he is very fan loyalist. So I think if they really wanted him, he would, and Disney would let him back, um, which, yeah. you know, the PC police would be on it and they'd be like, no, let him back. Obviously, in the public eye, he's a hero. So you yeah. you will be the bad guys if you didn't let him back into this franchise. So I think if they asked him and the fans really wanted it, he would. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. So, you know, people watching this right now have the benefit of knowing, <laughs> most likely, and we don't. So that'll be interesting. 
Interesting. Have you been watching the stuff on TikTok and? Oh, I've been I've been watching the trial like because I I I'm a I'm a night owl. I do a lot of work at night time, and I'll quite often have it on in the background, uh, or just in my ears whilst I'm doing some work. And it's 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 just it's melodrama. It's you know it doesn't make a difference to me one way or the other, mm-hmm. you know. But you do find it's like watching Law and Order. You do find that you know you're taking sides and you're you're invested in the narrative that's unfolding. And it's like it's you know it's exciting when somebody gets rolled. You know somebody gets proven to be lying. It's like yeah fuck yeah. You know that it, you get you become a fan of the process. Um, but I, I, can't wait to, I can't wait to see the mini series of this that comes out because <laughs> you know, you know that's coming. Well, yes, but the but also, I mean, that would be only fascinating to me to get, even though it's fictionalized, a glimpse behind the scenes of you yeah. know the preparation because it's all out there now for the public to see. Like we can go back and watch every single minute of this trial from start to finish. So, if you're going to make a, a, a series out of it you have to show us the stuff we don't know or ha- haven't seen. I think even if they don't include too much of that, people will still watch it <laughs> to be completely honest yeah. with you. But it would be really interesting to see that because his lawyers are fucking kick ass. Yeah. And, and if, and, and hers aren't. So that's, that's very, you know, the, the juxtaposition between those is hilarious, but I don't know if he comes back on top in a good way, in a big way. And he's like the golden boy get of Hollywood. There's a good chance they won't do it. You know? It'd that be more well. of your, it'd be more of your, your, like your daytime, midday movie type of thing, as opposed to you know, a proper HBO series or something. I just think, you know, it'd be a bit tactless, but I don't know, whatever, whatever. It's Who knows it's, what the future it's, holds? It's, Crazier things have happened. <laughs> classic, <laughs> classic Hollywood stuff though, isn't it? You know, <laughs> scandal and all that. Oh, you know? It'll never be not entertaining to be completely yeah transparent like it's just um people will buy into anything as long as you're telling them what they think they want to hear yep you throw a an end line at me and i will grab it because you know you are never not entertaining so there's a good way to end it how about that sure yeah you'll take that (laughs) i will see you next i'll see you next week chloe all right then (laughs) is that your attempt